Hi, it's Miss House. In this video, I want to talk with you about concavity and what it means. So when you have a graph, we'll take a look at this graph, you can see that the shape of the graph here is changing. Okay, If I look at the graph from here to about here, you'll see that the curvature of this graph is downward. Okay, and we call this concave down. And when we pick up about right here and we look at this, the curvature of the graph is upward, and we call that concave up. And there are some unique applications that happen at this point where it changes from concave down to con concave up. So we need to talk about how do we find where a graph changes from concave down to up or concave up to down. So I'm going to start with talking about the second derivative. So if you have a function, let's say f of x, is x cubed plus 2x squared. That's the one that is um, featured here, x cubed plus 2x squared. And you take the derivative of that. This is going to tell us where the function is increasing and decreasing so that we can find those local extrema points or those relative extreme points. So my first derivative is 3x squared plus 4x. And if I set this equal to 0, and I factor out the x, and I set each of these factors equal to 0, 3x is negative 4, I get these two points that are called my critical numbers. So my critical numbers are 0, and negative four-thirds. So we put those on a number line. And of course we have the graph, so we could actually just look at the graph, but we're gonna do it algebraically first. So we put these on a number line, put the smallest one to the left and the largest one to the right, and then we evaluate using a test point from each of these regions. So I can put a negative two, that's less than negative four-thirds. Remember that's negative one and a third. So anything to the left of that, in between here, I can use a negative 1, and to the right, I'll use a 1. So I'm going to evaluate the first derivative at my three test points. f of negative 2, f prime, sorry, f prime of negative 2 is 3 times negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2. And if you put parentheses around your input values, you can just type this right into your calculator and get the value. Let's see, that's going to be 12 minus 8 is 4. So this is positive. That means that in this interval, until I get to negative 4 thirds, that the function is increasing. So we're increasing because f prime is positive. Now we'll check f prime of negative 1. So repeat that process, 3 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1. It's going to be 3 minus 4. That's going to be a negative 1. So here it's going to be decreasing because f prime is negative. And I could say less than 0 and greater than 0 instead of positive and negative because that's a even better way to say it. Less than zero is going to be negative. Oops, let me fix that. Greater than zero is going to be positive. And then on the right, I'll pick f prime of 1. And that's going to be 3 times 1 squared plus 4 times 1. And that's going to be 7. So again, it's going to be increasing in this interval over here. And... That's because f prime is greater than 0. It's positive, 
negative in the middle, and positive here. So if I go over to my graph, I should see something happening at negative 4 thirds and something happening at 0. Now this is between negative 4 thirds and 0 in here. And in that interval, it's decreasing. So look what's happening. It's going from increasing to decreasing to increasing. So here is going to be a relative max, and here is going to be a relative minimum. So let's go over to our graph, and let's look at what, what ha what's happening at 0 and negative 4 thirds. So here on my graph, and again, we're just looking at the first derivative now. We're not to the second derivative yet. We said something was happening at 0. Well, here it is right here. Okay, And we said something was happening at negative 1 and 1 third. Remember, it was negative 4 over 3, which is the same as negative 1 and 1 third. And you can see that the function's increasing here until it gets to that negative 4 thirds when it starts to decrease here. And then it changes from decreasing to increasing here. And you'll notice from increase to decrease, we have a relative max on our graph. And from decrease to increase, we have a relative minimum. If we want to find the relative max in min, we have to go back to the original function. So I need to do y or f of x at negative 4 thirds. And that's going to give me this y value here which is my maximum, my relative maximum. And then I need to do y at 0, and that's going to give me my relative minimum. Now, remember, the reason these are relative is that there's a much lower value to the left and a much lower value to the, I mean, higher value to the right. So it's not an absolute maximum, but within this little section, say, in here, that's a maximum, and between here and here, that's a minimum. All right, so I would put the negative 4 thirds here. It's going to take me a minute to do this arithmetic. And, of course, if you put this in the calculator and use the fraction key, you can let it do the arithmetic for you. The main thing is to realize that when you're finding the actual max or min, you go to the function, not the derivative. So... When I put in negative 4 thirds, I get negative 64 over 27 plus, let's see, that's going to be 16 over 9, so 32 over 9. I'll do it the old fashioned way. Negative 64 over 27 plus 96 over 27. And then I do 96 minus 64. And so that's 32 over 27. And I'm just going to do a quick calculate. It's about 1.2. And you can see, look, it's right in here at about 1.2. 1.5 would be here. 1.25 would be here. So it's a little less than 1.2. When I put in a zero, I think it's pretty easy to see. Here we get a zero. So we would say that we have relative max of 32 over 27 at x equals negative 4 thirds. And a relative min of 0 at x equals 0. And that is what our first derivative helps us find. Now we're going to take a look at the second derivative. So if we take this same function, y equals x cubed plus 2x squared, and of course we've taken the first derivative, and of course we can write that dy dx. I'm going to do that because I'm going to show you what the notation looks like for the second derivative when we're using this notation. So there's the first derivative. 
And then when we take the second derivative, we write d2y over dx2. And we don't say it like that. We say second derivative of y, okay, uh, with respect to x, with respect to x. So that's going to give me a 6x plus 4. So I have a, another equation. I'm going to set it equal to 0, solve it. Negative 4 over 6 is reduced to negative 2 thirds. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put that number on a number line. And I'm going to pick test points to the right and to the left. I'm going to pick a 0 and a negative 1. And I'm going to put it into the second derivative. So I'm going to do d, second derivative of y with respect to x. And yes, it's in between on the top and on the outside on the bottom. At negative 1 is 6 times negative 1 plus 4. That's going to be a negative 2, so it's a negative here. And what that's going to tell us is it's concave down, okay? Think of negative is going to be down. And then the second derivative of y with respect to x at 0 is 6 times 0 plus 4 is 4. So it's positive, and the graph should be concave up. So let's go back to our graph and look and see what's happening at negative 2 thirds. So here's my graph. I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this other stuff off. Here's, let's see, negative 2 thirds was, was the value that we got when we solved it. So think about negative 2 thirds. If I divide this into three spaces, negative two-thirds is about right here, okay? So we got that y prime was y double prime, okay? That's your second derivative instead of a prime. It's a double prime. Let me make that look like a y double prime at negative one. Remember what we got? We got that it was negative. So I'm going to say less than zero. So over here, look, concave down. Everything from negative infinity to negative two-thirds is where it is concave down. Now, at the point negative two-thirds, it switches over. Y double prime of zero, we check that. It came out to be a positive number, so greater than zero. So from negative two-thirds to infinity, it's concave up. Okay, And this point right here is called the point of inflection. It's the point where a graph changes concavity. That's called an inflection point. Now, we know only the x, we would need to find the y, so I would have to do the original function, right? Because I'm trying to find this point. Look, it looks like it's around a half. Let's see how close it is to that. So I've got negative 2 thirds cubed plus 2 times negative 2 thirds squared. That's going to give me, let's see, it's going to be a negative. 2 to the thirds, 8 27ths plus, let's see, that's going to be 4 ninths times 2. So let's see, 4 times 2, 8 ninths. And we've got to get a common denominator, 27. Again, do it on your calculator. That's going to be negative 8 over 27 plus 24 over 27, so 24 minus 8, 16 over 27. 16 divided by 27 is approximately 0. 0.6. 
So remember I said it was close to 0.5, it's actually at 0.6. So the point of inflection here is negative two thirds and 1627. So you don't wanna put the decimal estimate, you wanna put the actual. Here's our point of inflection. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So the second derivative test is going to tell us these things, where it is concave up, where it is concave down, and where you have points of inflection. All right, so let's, let's just review the notation. If you start with f of x, f prime of x, and I always make mine a little too straight up and down. It's actually like an apostrophe. This is your first derivative. Okay, this is our original, f of x is our original function. And if we wanna do the second derivative, that means we take the derivative of the derivative and we use a double prime. And we just say second derivative. Now, if we use y as our original function, the notation uh, at where y is a function of x would be um, dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, that's your first derivative. And then the second derivative is written d2y over dx2. And those are not squares, and that's why I'm saying uh, d2y instead of d squared y. It's d2y. And we just say second derivative when we see that. Now, your book uh, and the stuff you see online is going to use these interchangeably. So that's why we go over this.